Let's move to right ventricle. In order to um, measure the volumes, the ejection fraction, the contractility uh, of right ventricle, we should lean the patient and take a nice RV focus view. And when we have our view, then again, we press large. We align these lines to the right ventricle now. And now you can see that we have a frame rate of 19. Uh, it, is, it is adequate, it is sufficient uh, in order to uh, estimate uh, the right ventricle. Uh, I can take one multi-slice view over here or I can ask my patient to hold his breath. Press multi-beat. Press image store and then I can have this view. Here I have 19 frames per second and I have a better spatial resolution. So again I go to this view, press measure, press now auto RVQ for right ventricle. The machine is processing our views. And then the first thing we have is this view, where uh, at every image, at every view, you can see that you are directed by the machine what to do. Here we have to go to the tricuspid valve center. And our uh, yellow line should go through the apex. I suggest that this blue line, or both blue lines, should go down in order to be able to see um, uh, the ventricle at your short axis views. So, we align a, a bit this view. We go to the other view and go again to the middle of tricuspid valve. And we also align this view. Our green line now should go through uh, the apex of the right ventricle. <clears throat> and you can see that now that we have a good alignment of both apical views, we go uh, to the short axis views and these green lines should go uh, through uh, the um, through the tip of the free wall of the right ventricle, as it is right now. So then I press set landmarks, and then you can see that uh, my pointer says what should I point point out. It says uh, tricuspid annulus free wall. It's right here. Tricuspid annulus septal right here. RV apex, which is. Uh, where the red ventricle um, um, touches the left ventricle. And then we go to the short axis view, uh, RV, RV posterior here, anterior, which is here, and free wall, which is a bit inside the endocardium. This is our next uh, image, where you can see a live uh, movement of the right ventricle. And here you can see the systole and diastole at uh, every uh, apical and uh, short axis views. In order to change the borders, we go to the pen size. I always use 
the small pen size in order to make adjustments uh, with uh, accurate adjustments. And then <clears throat> I go and change the borders of what I see. I do this at systole and diastole. And if I am satisfied overall with the delineation of the endocardium, sometimes it's difficult to see the free wall especially at the anterior part of the right ventricle. Here, we can go a bit further. Here's okay. Then we press results and we have this view of right ventricle with all these measurements. Right ventricle and diastolic volume and systolic volume Ejection fraction, stroke volume, diameters, TAPSE, and uh, the contractility with FAC, fractional area change. And you can see that whatever I ask to show me, I can have these measurements. So this is the way we measure with uh, 4D cardiography the volumes in the ejection fraction of right ventricle. It's very easy. Uh, if you see it once and do it uh, routinely, it will be very easy and it will demand a few minutes uh, for you to uh, acquire these images and uh, make correct measurements of uh, the right ventricle. Again, the variability, the inter-observer and the intra-observer is uh, uh, less than in 2D echocardiography.